offers, and so much more. And we're excited for our Bookster segment to have author and the CEO of Go Big Media. I like that. Go big and go bold, maybe. Mm -hmm. I love um, that. <laughs> Philip Stutz. Philip uses his 20 years of marketing experience, work with several Fortune 20, 200 companies, and his contribution to more than 1,000 successful elections to advise young marketers and business owners on how to be successful in today's disruptive economy. In his new book, Fire Them Now. Welcome, Philip. Thanks. Real quick, that was an amazing segment y'all just did. Thank y'all for doing that. That was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I mean, with the work that their family has done, yeah. and um, it's, I, I, want, I want to have him back. Yeah, totally. All right, sorry. It sorry. really shows no. how, how you can turn a tragic, yeah. otherwise life-changing situation and really uh, make something long-lasting and really meaningful yeah. out of it. So totally. he's an inspiration to us yeah, all. Yeah, and cool. Rachel, Rachel's life, I'm, I'm so glad that they're keeping her legacy and her memory alive. I mean, she was uh, an, an artist. She wanted to be an actress, and she'd created works of art and just really inspiring stories. Cool. So, um, But so tell us, first of all, yeah, thousand elections. How yeah. was that even humanly That's possible? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, how does that happen? I, I did uh, multiple World. election cycles at the Republican National Committee. We were, you know, I was in a senior leadership role on the Bush campaign uh, in 2004, and through those, we were working on campaigns all over the country. So that was part of uh, part of those wins. And then, in my own company, we've done tons of legislative races all over the country and independent expenditures, and uh, added up, it's it's over a thousand. And what, what made you say, I absolutely have to write this book right now? That is, Especially the title. I mean, you know, fire them now. Yeah. That's very much like somebody so, that we know who's in office. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, the, the, the genesis of this came in the sense that, first of all, it's the, really the first look uh, at modern political campaigns and how they're run and the strategies we use to win in politics. So there's no gossip in here. We're not trying to uh, tell all secrets, of it, but we do tell the secrets of how we win political campaigns. And when I started taking that concept and applying it to businesses, um, what I found was I interviewed over 100 CEOs, and they all came back with the exact same frustration they had, that the digital marketplace was totally different than anything they'd ever understood, and they had hired a marketing agency who took their money. They, didn't, they weren't transparent. They signed these huge long-term contracts with them. These guys, the marketing agencies got paid before they saw any ROI in their business, and they were all frustrated. All of them, and I'm talking about Fortune 200 companies to small businesses. It was crazy. And that one conversation I had, I was in China this summer with a Fortune 500 CEO, and he's telling me this story, and I'm about to start writing this book, and I didn't have a title. And I looked at him, and I go, well, just fire them now. <laughs> and I was like, I thought to myself, that's it. That's the title. I got it. And it, that was how it all came about. Well, when I heard about your book, I kept thinking about how Trump defeated Jeb Bush, who had raised $100 million. Sure. And, and Trump himself had spent just a small fraction of that, maybe two or three million. Right. So clearly there was a huge delta there in terms of the, the spend differential that was a big waste of money. Well, it was... And sorry, you work for the Bush family, but... Yeah, no, no, that's okay. I mean, I'm, I want to be honest about it. I mean, it, it, this is going to sound crazy, but there's a reason. Uh, in that campaign, Donald Trump came off as an authentic candidate. And what I mean by that is that people saw him, he said what he said, but that's who he is. He was unapologetic about it. Unapologetic about it. And the other way is Jeb tried to run uh, an old time campaign where he wasn't as authentic. And then all of a sudden when Trump started calling him out, he'd run out and start yelling and screaming on the microphone. Everybody's like, that's not who he is. People saw through that and it blew through the It wasn't his authentic self. That's right. And that's what we talk about in the book. It's like, I want to try to get CEOs and business owners to talk in an authentic manner. I'll, I'll give you one example. Um, the Delta in the book, I talk about this. Delta does a, you know, puts out a press release and does national Hispanic uh, appreciation month, which I just think is total garbage. Now, hear me out why. Okay. It is. Careful, you're with Delta's not a sponsor. That's my, good. My so space. you're going you're gonna to agree with me, and that's why. Because it, that, is, that is such pandering from a company. There's nothing, they're just putting out a press release to, to generate what? There's nothing there. That's not authentic. They're just p marking, you know, stamping, we need to do this to make sure we check a so box. In that case, what should they have done instead? Right. My suggestion is what Delta should have 
have done is find at least two or three or four or a group of Hispanics that work at Delta, identify their incredible story of how they came to Delta, what they do to support their families, how they're part of the Delta family, and highlight those stories of actual people, real people that work, Hispanics that work at Delta, and tell those stories in an authentic manner and in an incredible, creative manner. Tell an, tell an amazing, inspiring story about these people, because here's what would happen. One, the, the, the customers of Delta would be like, oh, that's interesting. Wow, what a great company. And two, the company culture would be, you'd be honoring and, and, and going out and helping this company and saying, listen, we want to honor our employees. We want to show how great they are. We want to tell their story. That is a better way of doing it than just putting a press release out that says we honor National Hispanic Heritage Month. That doesn't mean anything. So that's what I mean by so that. You're, you talked about authenticity. So what are some of the other factors that people really need to focus on and have in order to be successful, in order to have a, a great uh, election, uh, not election, um, campaign? Yeah. And so I, I say politics is the ultimate startup company, right? We started, our candidates start at zero. We have no money. Our candidates have no money. They have no name ID. And we have to raise money, run ads, raise name ID, and then get them elected on election day. That's ultimately the payoff, right? And that forces us election day to move very, very quickly. The speed in which we move is, in, is unlike anything else. And what I try to in, in, you know, push on businesses, they've got to move quicker. Startup companies in Silicon Valley are becoming billion-dollar companies because they move very quickly. Sure. I mean, that's certainly the argument of Clayton Christensen, who's a Harvard Business School professor. Did yeah. you work with him on this? No, at all? I did not. Do you, do you know him? Are no, you... I don't. Uh -uh. Oh, well, then you need to—I can hook you up. We'll oh, that great. That'd be sure. awesome. But, um, but his small whole... businesses— are lacking this. Sure. Well, so, I mean, his whole thing is um, disruption. Yeah. Like, that's how big companies like Kodak was disrupted sure, by digital. Right. Kodak didn't take digital seriously. They're like, no, everyone's always going to want to hold this thing and get a print out immediately. Right. That's because digital, ha, huh? and they laughed at it. Yeah. And then, and now they're no more. Right. Um, so, but that's that's Clayton Christensen's whole oh, yeah. uh, analysis is, is what what's disrupting the industry if you're a big incumbent yeah. having an, an entrepreneurs and startups within your own company to find what are our vulnerabilities and uh, clearly a lot of big guys don't do that well here's the deal the disruption i talk about in the book is massive and it's coming and it's not just going to affect 50 percent of businesses it's a hundred percent because there's second order consequences to all the disruption that's coming and i talk about this people in silicon valley are going to laugh at this but the self-driving car that's done they it's coming out it's five years away my little five-year-old girl will never drive a car it's coming, and that's not, I mean, the, the automobile industry is done in a certain sense, but the second order consequences are what happens to insurance companies that insure cars and that don't have drivers that are 99% safer than they are now. By the way, what happens to organ donors when there are no more car accidents? What happens to EMS, you know, and, and nurses when we don't have the car accident, you know, numbers that are coming into the so emergency room? we're talking about room. holistic, multidimensional. Right. And so change. businesses need to know this change is coming and they've got to move quickly and they need outlier strategies. And I truly believe that way, the way we run political campaigns is that way to do it because no one is utilizing those strategies except the people we're working with. But I, that's not the point. The point is that they have figured out they have to use these strategies, these different strategies in order to, to adjust in the, in the disruptive economy. All right. Well, Philip Stutz, thank you so much. And your website's philipstutz.com. Yeah. Uh, the book is Fire Them Now. And it's on, check it out. on sale for 99 cents for your viewers until midnight tonight. Ooh, oh, make sure great. to check that out. Do I get a signed copy? Sure. Excellent. Bold bargain. Check it out. Fire Them Now. Thank you so much, Philip Stutz. Thank Stutz. you. Uh, and thank you all for being here for another episode of